All right. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Jerry. I'm co-founder and CEO of Llama Index. For those of you who don't know, Llama Index is a data framework for building LLM applications over your data. Uh, we're used at large enterprises, so startups alike. And today, I'll be kind of talking about a new set of uh, topics, which is beyond naive RAG. Like, how do you add agents to RAG, retrieval augmented generation? This is the first time I'm beta testing these slides. So if I go over, I, I apologize. I'll, I'll share these slides uh, more publicly afterwards. But um, yeah, here we go. So Llama Index is a framework for connecting your data to LMS to build a production app, right? And so if you're building like a chat bot, if you're building a workflow automation thing, if you're trying to build like document insight extraction and intelligence, um, the, like, we provide the core toolkits for you to basically do that, right, as a developer. And so we provide stuff like data loaders. We provide data indexing. We also provide query orchestration. This includes everything from retrieval to prompt orchestration with LLMs um, to the subject of the talk today, which is how do you actually kind of craft these higher level abstractions of agents and what does that really mean? So let's quickly touch on what RAG is, right? I'm pretty sure most of you have probably heard of RAG. A lot of enterprises care about RAG. It's basically this like three letter buzzword. So what exactly is it? Prototyping RAG is basically, you know, you take some documents, chunk it up, put it into a vector database. So you do some like basic lightweight data ingestion. And then once it's in a vector database, you do some sort of retrieval and LLM logic to pull that data out of a, out of a database to basically build your application. If you ever built like a chat with your data, like chat GPT over your PDFs or something, this is basically the stack that you follow. And if you follow the quick start tutorial of LAM index, you can do this in five lines of code. But I think one of the main issues is that RAG prototypes are limited, right? Uh, if you're a developer and you built RAG in the past year, you probably realize that it works well for simple questions over a small set of documents, but it doesn't really work for a lot of other cases. So stuff like, you know, what are some of the risk factors for Tesla? Yeah, sure, I can answer that. What, what did like this author do at this very specific point in time? It will be able to answer that. But even if it's able to answer the simple questions, um, it's not going to be able to answer this entire class of different types of questions you might want to ask. And it turns out question answering over a large set of documents is a pretty hard problem. So here are some challenges with naive RAG, right? There are certain questions we want to ask where basic top K retrieval is going to fail. Summarization questions. Give me a summary and analysis of this document instead of just looking up a specific piece of this document. Comparison questions. Compare the open source contributions of like candidate A, candidate B if you're doing resume analysis, or basically any sort of compare like apples versus oranges, right? Structured analytics and semantic search. If you want to ask a question that requires looking up stuff from like a SQL database, but also combine that with information from unstructured text, how do you actually do that? And general multi-part questions. And this is where we really got into agents. Like, tell me about this, and then tell me about that, and then do like all these sorts of tasks, and then try to string them all together to give me back a final result, right? And try to use as many tools as possible that's available to you to try to answer the following question. So the key idea here is we kind of, I kind of want to move beyond the three letter buzzword of RAG and more towards just how do I build like a proper question answering system that can handle any type of question. Right, so build a dynamic question answering system. And then at the end of the day, that's like really what you guys want to build. If you're in the enterprise, you want to unlock value from your data and you want to start by getting some basic trap bot in place. Each question requires a different pipeline implementation. Like a summarization question, you don't just do top K, you actually want to return all the information from a document. So your chunk is just inherently different. A comparison question requires breaking down the question into smaller components. And general multi-part questions might require sequential reasoning, planning, so that you can actually plan ahead what you're going to do, execute it, and get back this final uh, response at the end. So let's talk about agents. Many of you probably have heard of agents. We've all seen projects like you know, AutoGPT, GPT Researcher, Crew AI recently, and a lot of kind of like new agent paradigms. And like frameworks like Autogen, for instance, give you the ability to craft like single agents, multi-agents, but how does that really relate to RAG and what can you do with it, right? How can you basically add on layers to RAG to make it more agentic? 
So here is RAG, right? You have a user question, you have your RAG black box pipeline, and you have an answer, right? You can add agents in the beginning. You can add agents in the middle. You can add agents at the end. And, and so I'll talk about what this basically means, but basically you can make any part of your RAG pipeline more agentic, right? To basically make it more sophisticated towards this vision of a dynamic QA system. What exactly is an agent? An agent is using an LLM for automated reasoning and tool selection, right? Everybody has a broad definition of what an agent means. Some are quite broad, um, some are more restrictive and, and limited to a specific set of like architectures that work. But for our purposes, let's just say using the LLMs at different stages of this process to basically do more intelligent reasoning over your question and your data. From this point of view, RAG is just one tool. Right, RAG is just a lookup tool over a specific data source. And agents are basically this higher level abstraction that wraps around you know, an existing tool. And agents can decide to use RAG as one tool. It can also use other tools as well to try to access data, interface with it, get back a response, and synthesize the right answer for you. So the kind of spectrum I want to think about here is from simple to advanced agents. What does that actually look like? And we'll kind of talk about that in layers from the like, most simple definition of what an agent possibly could be to something that's a bit more complicated like React, dynamic query planning, some of the recent papers coming out today. So simple stuff includes routing, right? query planning, tool use in like a single pipeline. And then you move on to more, uh, more automated reasoning loops like React and, and query planning. The simple stuff tends to be lower cost, lower latency. It's also less expressive, so you're not gonna be able to do as much stuff, but it's gonna be cheaper. Um, the stuff that's uh, gonna be more sophisticated is gonna be higher cost, higher latency, but of course more powerful. It's gonna be able to handle a broader class of questions and do more things for you. So let's start from the basics. Well, let's talk about routing. Routing is probably the simplest form of agentic reasoning, right? Um, what is routing? Routing is basically given some sort of input task or input string or question and a set of choices. Pick the set of choices that you want to route this question to. So you use an LLM in there, right? You have an LLM like GPT-3, GPT-4, Anthropic, and given a query, you pick the relevant set of choices that this uh, query corresponds to. And why does this like kind of add an initial level of agentic reasoning on top of RAG? It's because you can build something very simple that's a little bit more dynamic than what you have currently. So let's assume you have like a RAG pipeline over your given data. You also have a separate summarization pipeline over your data where the chunks are just completely different, right? You feed in the entire document as opposed to just like little bits of the document to your LLM. Now you add a router at the top layer. Given a question, you can actually decide which of the sub like query engines like the RAG pipelines to actually call. You can call the one that fetches smaller chunks for top K uh, from a, from a, like that does top K lookup from a vector database, or you could fetch the entire document. And this is dependent on the user question, right? So as a level of like, given this question, I'll dynamically choose what underlying choice corresponds to this. And so yeah, one of the use cases is you can actually combine question answering and, and summarization in the same, uh, same flow. The next step here is query planning. So, Given a question, besides just routing it to an underlying tool or query engine, can we actually break down this query into parallelizable subqueries? A classic example here is, you know, compare the revenue growth of Uber and Lyft in 2021. Um, this type of question, if you just launch this against a regular RAG pipeline and look up like the top K most similar chunks from this, you're not gonna get back the right results. It's because this really is a multi-part question that can be broken down into two sub-questions. Like, what is the revenue of, of Lyft in 2021? And what is the revenue of Uber in 2021? Once you're able to break it down into sub-questions, you can launch each sub-question as a query against a relevant data source to get back the answer that you're looking for. If you launch the initial question, you, you are not guaranteed to basically get back the relevant context uh, for your answer, right? And so, how can you actually do query decomposition? It's quite simple. It's, it's just a prompt. You have an input question. You feed it into some prompt that tells it, you know, that asks it to break down a question into smaller subtasks over some subset of tools if it's relevant, and then execute the subtask 
Uh, you can do this in parallel too, especially if you have like, uh, you know, multiple parallelizable subtasks. You execute it against each pipeline and you combine the results at the end. This is another definition of, you know, something that's agentic that gives you more query capabilities than just a standard RAG pipeline. And so, yeah, the example here is basically, you know, given just some general financial document analysis, given basically any sort of comparison question, query planning is a good way to try to handle these types of multi-part parallelizable uh, questions over your data. Another step here that's another kind of a step with, um, that, that, that builds towards like a full-on agent is this idea of just calling an arbitrary tool. So the idea of tool use is that you use an LLM to call an API. Um, and, and the API, right, instead of being called by a human, is called by an LLM that actually decides the parameters to infer in order to actually use a given tool. It turns out that a lot of things that you're building today probably fall within this paradigm, right? Um, whether you're querying a vector database, whether you're querying a SQL database, or whether you're querying an endpoint like Google Search, Google Calendar, um, like the weather, a lot of this, these agents that people are building these days involve some aspect of being able to translate a user query into a set of parameters for an agent tool. We can kind of talk about in the future as these tool interfaces evolve, how API interfaces will probably become more agent-oriented as opposed to human-oriented, and so it'll be easier for agents to use these different services and interact with each other through you know, microservices, multi-agent settings. But that's probably a topic for a different talk. But you know, in normal RAG, when you have a user question, you basically just launch it against a vector database. You don't do anything to the query, you just directly pass it through to the vector database to look up the most relevant context. If you add just an additional layer in the beginning, where instead of like directly passing it through to the vector database, you have an LLM try to infer the full set of parameters of the API interface to your data system, then it turns out there's a lot of stuff that falls into this category. One paradigm is auto-retrieval, where instead of just passing through the query, you also pass through the metadata filters. By passing through the metadata filters, you can basically craft a more precise query against your vector DB to get back an answer. This also applies to text to SQL for anyone building like structured analytics over a structured database. Uh, translating your query into a SQL statement is basically an example of this, right? The API interface, right, is a SQL statement. And so the agent is, is responsible, for, uh, responsible for converting a natural language task into a SQL statement to execute against the DB. And of course, any other API tool as well. If you have like an API for Google Calendar, uh, it has a set of like args and kwargs, you can infer the set of parameters that you need to basically hit this tool. So we've talked about a basic agentic pipeline, um, and this is cool, but how can an agent try to tackle more sequential multi-part problems? We've added some basic reasoning layers that roughly execute in a linear fashion. And, but how, how can an agent basically tackle stuff where it needs to iteratively kind of go back and forth to try to arrive at the final answer? And also, how can an agent actually be stateful, right? How can it maintain state over time so it uses past experiences to also influence how it arrives at a final answer? And so some simple, I mean, not simple, but basically some simple concepts is to try to just, you know, add a loop. So far, it's been a linear kind of execution like pipeline. Let's just add a loop and then let's try to add a basic memory module. So it maintains state and it can actually call itself so it can loop back and forth. So in Llama index, we have this concept of a data agent, which is basically just an agent. And then the core components of an agent include some sort of execution pipeline, which can include query planning, tool use, routing, whatever you want, basically. And there's some sort of agentic loop at the top. These agentic loops include React, which has probably been like the most popular agent loop so far. You know, it came out as a paper in 2022 and it's been widely adopted. OpenAI, of course, has a function calling endpoint and now an assistance API, which handles some of that stuff for you, or you could just call the function calling endpoint in a while loop. And so just to talk about React really quick, React, right, is a paradigm where take, given a question, it not only just executes stuff in a one-shot setting, uh, you actually execute it in a while loop where you have like some thought and then some action that you want to take as well as the input to that action. And the thing is you keep executing this in a loop until you're actually done with the task. And so after every intermediate step where you can break down a question into a smaller task, you get back the intermediate output appended to the conversation history, and then you keep on going from the beginning until it's actually done. 
It's been pretty popular. Uh, a key like concept here is it basically just plans the next step ahead. And so it's like a for loop until it actually finishes. And this you know, is roughly a superset of everything that I just talked about. It includes tool use. You can you know, use tools because it, it can infer an action and actually how to actually you know, use a tool, like the parameters for that action. It can do decomposition and query planning because it get, takes in a question and can decompose it into smaller subproblems. It can also do routing, right? Like give in a question, figure out what are the most relevant tools for that question. And the main thing is it can keep on doing this in a while loop until it's done. And so, of course, we have this implemented in LAM index, and it can, you know, it's a, it's a pretty popular paradigm for adding an agent. And yeah, as I said, it's a superset of routing and query capabilities. The next step here, though, and this is something that's interesting and something I imagine that will probably happen more and more this year is people are finding out ways to go beyond React. Can we add better agent architectures, paradigms that basically enable long term planning? So instead of just planning out the next step, uh, simulations, rollouts, long-term planning. So you basically aggregate the results at the end and also just optimize system level components. So it actually ends up kind of being like an operating system. Given any sort of task that it plans out, it actually optimizes it system-wise to reduce both cost, latency, and, and you're able to base, get back results as fast as possible. A recent paper that we hosted the authors on, on the webinar uh, is, is LLM Compiler, which is a cool paper that actually kind of treats this roughly equivalent to a computer architecture, right? Like the LLM OS that Karpathy put out. You have a user question, and instead of just sequentially planning out the next step in, a, in, in like a for loop, uh, you actually plan out an entire DAG, like an entire computation graph beforehand. And you plan out like symbolically what variables are going to need filled out before what so you have a dependency graph mapped out. And then you basically have an executor that tries to execute everything in parallel when it can. And so it's very systems-like. You have like an architecture that does planning. You have another module that pulls tasks from a queue and actually tries to execute it in parallel. And then you also have a replanning step where after some number of iterations, you can figure out if your plans are actually going according to plan and replan accordingly. And so you can plan out steps beforehand, replan as necessary, and this is also available as a kind of more experimental feature in LAM index, right? And so this not only enables all the features that I talked about beforehand, but potentially problems where you can go very high up the level of abstraction, where you give a very vague task to the system, and it can figure out you know, all the search and retrieval tasks it needs to handle like under the hood to give you back the answer. And the end goal is just no matter what question you give, it will literally kind of do research under the hood over your data to, give, uh, to get back the right response. Some additional final requirements, just as a closing statement, is um, as people build agents, and I anticipate that as these models get better and costs go down, more and more people will be building agents, we're going to need a few things. One is we're going to need observability so that people can actually see what's going on under the hood. So you basically see the full trace of the agent execution. You can basically have transparency of visibility in case something goes wrong. Control, you want to be able to actually guide the intermediate steps of an agent step by step. So if you ever played around with like the first uh, iteration of AutoGPT, you can basically give some initial human feedback as the agent is doing stuff. And ideally, you take that to the next level where you basically work with the agent in an assisted manner to complete a task together. And of course, customizability. All these paradigms right now are just research papers. And so I highly encourage all of you to try to implement your own thing, right? And as we said, there's basically layers to agents. At, a simple, at the simple, simplest level, it's just an LLM and prompt. And then it just extends to a for loop, and then you add more prompts. And this is all possible via the query syntax that um, we put out in Llama Index, right? It's basically a declarative way to just put out, string together a bunch of modules, compose it in a for loop, and you get out of the box ability to execute stuff step by step, inject intermediate user inputs, and get full observability over everything. So I think that's basically it. Thank you. Um, you can't, I mean, there's no way you can actually see the links for this, but I'll share this publicly. And um, yeah, check out our documentation. Thank you.